Hey everyone, what's up? It's Smite Pants Chess here again, and today I'm going to look at another Nezmetlinov game. This time he was playing a player called Emolin. Played in the year 1946 in Kazan, Nezmetlinov was playing white in this game. So we're going to look at it from the white perspective, and Emolin was obviously playing black. So Nezmetlinov played 1e4, Emolin played c5, white played knight to f3, and then there was d6, d4 takes takes and knight to f6 and knight c3 to support the e-pawn and g6 and now we're into a sicilian dragon and i put some nice arrows to demonstrate black's plan here black's plan is to play bishop g7 and also i put an arrow on the c file because black wants to put pressure on this file in the, the middle game and the end game and that's sort of the plan for the sicilian dragon so black will end up with a very powerful fianchetto bishop on g7 um, there's a few options that white can play, but one of them is bishop to e3 here. So white could have gone in for this, uh, the Yugoslav attack, with bishop g7, f3. If black castles, there's queen d2, knight c6. And white's got a few options. They can castle queenside here, or just play bishop to c4. And like I say, if we go back to the actual game after g6, there's so many ideas that white can play here. But actually, Nesmetnov decided to go for the Levenfish with f4. Now, interestingly, Black has numerous responses here. In his book, which is kind of outdated now, Nesmetnov actually believes knight c6 is the best move because this is recommended by Botvinnik. Or even moves like knight bd7 are considered good at this in this era. However, bishop g7 was played in the game, and Nesmetnov actually heavily criticises this move. But, actually, with computer analysis, it's considered the best variation now. Because after white goes e5, which is what happened in the game, black should now play knight h5. And after bishop b5, bishop d7, white can play e6. But after f takes e6, knight takes e6. Of course, this bishop on d7 is pinned by this bishop, so the bishop can't take this knight. But black can go bishop takes c3 check. After the pawn takes, then queen c8 attacking the knight on e6. Queen d4 attacking the rook, knight to f6 to block the queen. And after bishop takes d7, king takes d7, this is considered an equal game. Um, and this is sort of what the computer analysis says as well. But if we go back to the game, Nesmetnov has just played the move e5, attacking the knight on f6. And here actually black took it, d takes e5. And Nesmetnov recaptured, attacking the knight on f6. And already here it's looking quite bleak for black. Now there are several moves that black could play here, but they're not very good. If knight fd7, white should just play e6, and this really undermines black's position. We're attacking the knights and disrupting this pawn structure for black. I mean, black could even take this knight, but that's suicidal as well because the queen will recapture. So black's in quite a bit of trouble in this position. Another move that uh, black could play is knight to g4, but then actually this favours white due to bishop b5 check. If knight c6, then there comes knight takes c6, queen takes d1, and white can play knight takes d1. And here black should actually play a6, attacking the bishop, because that black doesn't want to give white any discovered attacks with this bishop. So the bishop retreats, and then bishop d7, h3, and knight takes e5, knight takes e5, bishop takes a4, and white should just play bishop f4 to protect their knight. And even after bishop takes c2, just play rook c1, and white's the whole piece up in this variation. Going back, knight h5 is also an option for black, but so there's meant was actually going to play g4 here. If bishop takes e5, then white can now again play bishop b5. This bishop b5 move is quite key in a lot of positions. After bishop d7, white just simply takes the knight on h5, and again is a piece up. So if we just go back to the game, there's not a lot of options for black. In the game, black played knight to d5. And Nesmetnov went bishop to b5 with check. Black's got to be a bit careful here because if he block the d file with knight to d7, then white could just take a free knight with knight takes d5. And also if they play a move like knight c6, this is again suicidal, just due to like knight takes c6, and the bishop will just recapture and win the rook with check. So after bishop b5, black's forced to move the king to f8. And here Nesmetnov plays a nice move, just develops the castle king side, so he gets the rook on the f-file, and now prepares moves like e6, 
really undermining black's pawn structure. For instance, let's say black now played knight takes c3. White can play knight to e6 with check, and the f-pawn is pinned, of course. But now the queen has a discovered attack against black's king. So white's going to win more material and possibly the game. So to stop this pawn advance, black took the pawn on e5 with bishop takes e5. And then Smetnov played bishop to h6 check. If bishop g7 here, this is actually a terrible move because now white can take the bishop with check. After king takes, white can just take the knight on d5. And after queen takes d5, there's knight to f5 check. And again, a discovered attack against the queen. Queen takes f5 is pretty much the only move to give black some sort of hope of a result here. But even so, rook takes f5, bishop takes f5, white can just play queen d4. After king g8, just play check, king g7, take the pawn on e7. And this should be an easy win for white. So in the game, black played king to g8, and it's looking very hopeless already for black. There's not enough plays now, the excellent move, knight takes d5. And the point of this move is that once black takes, so queen takes d5 was played, there's meant off play is a very smart move, knight to f5. So the queen is now attacking d5, but also this white knight on f5 is attacking the 7 pawn with checkmate. So once this knight jumps into e7, it's checkmate because this bishop covers all these squares. And now black's got a few options to make. For instance, if queen takes d1, knight to e7 is checkmate. And if queen takes b5, then just queen d8 with checkmate next move. So to be fair to black, he'd actually play the best move, which is queen c5 check here, because it gives a chance for white to go wrong. Now the wrong move here for white would be king h1, because then black can play knight to c6. Suddenly everything is defended. The e7 pawn is defended, and also the d8 square. If bishop takes c6, black just plays bishop takes f5. And all of a sudden white's attack has just disappeared. Going back to this move then, I wonder if you can find what Nesmetnov played here. I'll give you 10 seconds to try and find the move. So Nesmetnov's move here was bishop to e3. Attacking the queen, stopping the check. And the knight of course defends the bishop on e3. So why is this such a good move? Well, again if queen takes the bishop then queen d8 will lead to checkmate. So black's got to move their queen somewhere that stops queen d8. Uh, and queen c7 seems to be one of the only moves to stop this. But now when Esmetov finishes black off, he plays knight to h6 with check. And here actually black resigned the game. After only 15 moves. The point is after, let's say, king g7, then rook takes f7 is checkmate. All the squares are covered. The f8 square is covered by the rook, and the g8 square is covered by the knight. The f6 square is also covered by the rook, and this bishop protects the knight on h6, and the knight protects the rook. A very nice checkmate. Also, in this position, after knight to h6, king f8 also leads to mate due to rook takes f7. Again, this e8 square is covered by the bishop, and the g8 square is covered by the knight. The knight protects the rook, and the rook covers g7 as well, and delivers check. So, again, we have a very nice checkmate. So all in all, this was an excellent game by Nesmetnov. A very short game once again, but still a lot of uh, nice attacking ideas, and just absolutely destroyed the Sicilian dragon. And he didn't even make it look that difficult. I think opening theory has developed a lot since this game, though. So if you're going to try these ideas, do be a bit careful. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed my analysis. If you did, please, I appreciate the likes, comments and subscribes from all of you. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. It'd be great to have more people on the channel and it always helps out. Hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye for now.